Scotland's mighty Cairngorms, a landscape both beautiful and brutal. Britain's last bastion of wilderness. At this time of year, it's transformed into one of the coldest and windiest places in Britain. The last few days have seen the first snowfall of the year and there was a fresh dusting last night. So there's a discernible chill in the air. I've come to Mar Lodge, a 72,000 acre estate managed by the National Trust for Scotland to witness a landscape on the very cusp of winter. But as well as the rhythm of the changing seasons, another transformation is taking place here, a more gradual one. This is Caledonian pine forest, one of the rarest habitats in Britain. Here, it's making a comeback. When John visited five years ago, this landscape looked very different. And they've just about grazed it bare, the heather here. It is, yeah. The deer pressure here has been very high. Old trees had been dying for decades with no new trees to replace them. And the root of the problem was one of Scotland's most recognisable species, red deer. David Frew has been in charge of an ambitious project run by the National Trust for Scotland to turn things around. So it wasn't just man going around cutting down trees, it, it was deer as well that we're doing the damage. Yeah, herbivores grazing impacts really. At the moment any of these young trees were popping out through the heather, there were so many deer. The deer were coming along and, and nipping the trees out, just eating everything. So we needed to deal with that problem. There are no natural predators for deer, so that means we have to go out and, and cull them. Now, you weren't without your critics yeah. in the early days. Yeah. What were they saying? What were the main criticisms? Deer are considered a very important commercial resource in this part of the world. Of course. Uh, commercial stocking, it plays a big part in the local economy here. But it was never about getting rid of all the deer. It was just bringing the deer numbers down so that, you know, you still have that commercial resource there. There are still plenty of deer um, yeah. on Mar Lodge Estate and all around about us. But it, it's just finding that happy medium. It's finding the balance where, where all these trees can get away and there's still plenty of deer out there. Caledonian pine forest provides habitat for some rare and celebrated species, including red squirrel, black grouse, and capercaillie. The success of this ambitious conservation project is one of the reasons Mar Lodge has recently been designated a national nature reserve the largest in Britain. Almost from day one, one of the objectives, if you like, was to become a National Nature Reserve. There's been a lot of challenges along the way, but 22 years later, we're there. Um, it doesn't end here, though. That's kind of <laughs> one of the things that's quite important to realise, that you know, our vision for, for the estate and the woodland in particular is a 200-year vision. We'll all be long gone by wow. the time it, it really comes to fruition. So it's, you know, it's an ongoing project, it's ongoing work. We'll be at this for a long, long time. But to have the recognition that we've at least started the process is, is really great. But what good is a pristine landscape if no one can enjoy it? To fulfil its role as a national nature reserve, Mar Lodge needs to be open for all to appreciate. In practical terms, this means a vast network of bridges and footpaths. In a rugged and remote environment like this, nothing is simple. Even a task like repairing a footpath is quite a challenge. Today, timber from the estate's own plantations is needed for shoring up footpath edges. Paul Bolton is one of the site's rangers. He has an ingenious engineering solution to get the logs to the right location. So these are your logs for the footpath? That's right, yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. But what is this? So this is our, our log chute. This is our way of sorting the problem of getting the logs down to where the footpath is. Oh, we're just about to send a few more down now, if you'd like to. I would love on. to get involved. So how are we getting them on? So got these... using the timber tongs. <laughs> Excellent. OK. So you've got a team waiting at the bottom. So uh, there's a team waiting at the bottom who are going to sort these out. When they get down, they'll wait till we send a few down, and then they'll come in and move them. Got you. And uh, we'll okay. give it a little shove. Just to give it a shove down. Get it, off, get it down this flat bit. Ready? Timber! Is 
that works a treat. It's, uh, we're really pleased. It just saves so much hassle of having to carry them up and down. <sighs> down at the receiving end, the logs are going into position. Why do you need to do this? Because there is a footpath going along there. I can see it. People can follow it. Why go this extra mile? It's, yeah, it's, I think Mile Lodge it attracts a lot of different people, people who, who don't maybe come into the countryside as often, as well as the hill walkers that we get. So we yeah. sort of want to offer something for everyone. Right, so some people will come here and go Munro bagging. Yeah. Others might prefer a gentle stroll by the river, and this is for them. This is for them, yes. Yeah. So it's trying to have a bit of something for everyone. There's plenty still to do, but this is the start of work that will enable many more people to enjoy this, our newest National Nature Reserve.